What is going on, Odd Warriors? It's your boy Edward V, and we're going to talk about five intermittent fasting side effects and how you can avoid them. These are important things because not everything is perfect. Even in a great system like intermittent fasting, there's always things that you have to look out for. I've done a video like this before in the past, but these are five different side effects that may or may not affect you. I'm gonna go ahead and break it down in this video. Stay tuned. All right, guys, quickly before we start, this video is brought to you by yours truly, Fledge Fitness and the Fledge Fitness Jump Rope. If you haven't gotten yours yet, what are you waiting for? With an ergonomic design, aluminum handle, and swivel design, you can't go wrong with the Fledge Fitness Jump Rope. You can click on the top right-hand corner of this video or down in the description box below. And of course, as always, guys, thank you so much for your support. Now, let's go ahead and jump right into the video. All right, the first side effect that we're going to talk about with intermittent fasting is a pretty obvious one if you think about the concept before you do it, and that is hunger and cravings. You are going to have hunger and cravings as your body tries to fight your notion of intermittent fasting or of fasting. Uh, your body wants you to consistently eat, especially if it's on a rhythm or flow. That is normally why you are hungry during breakfast times and during lunch times and during dinner times not because it's breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and humans are just biologically predisposed to wanting to eat during those specific times. It is because we've created those times and we've passed it down from generation to generation and we continue to do it creating a biological rhythm. Once you snap that, however, you just gotta have a mindset to know that you will get over that hill. Uh, there is not really anything you can do initially. Uh, I would suggest that this is something that is very scary for you to start because you don't want to feel those hunger pains. Try to do a lower uh, fasting time window with a much larger eating time window. Uh, I would recommend, for example, the 16-8. So doing 16 hours of fasting where eight of those hours you are most likely sleeping anyways. So really is about eight awake hours of fasting. I would recommend doing that and getting your feet wet before you can go into any more aggressive uh, tactics like 20 hours of fasting with four hours of eating or one meal a day where you eat just one hour throughout the day. So that's how you avoid it by understanding that it is something that you will have to deal with and getting over that hump so that you won't have to deal with it anymore once you create a new biological rhythm with intermittent fasting. Number two, which is important because this happens to a lot of people, is malnutrition. Now, when you say when we say the word malnutrition, we automatically just take that as a negative term. You are lacking nutrients. However, the lack of nutrients being malnutrient in little doses actually creates some of the benefits that we see health-wise with intermittent fasting. For example, autophagy, which is created from stress signals that come from the act of fasting, which helps clean out the cells and help you to build more fresh new cells. So there are elements of malnutrition where you want it in small doses, but you could actually go further into malnutrition if you aren't aware or careful about what you are eating when you're intermittent fasting. It is very likely that you can reduce your amount of food consumed simply because you are shortening your window of eating it. And therefore, if the food isn't nutrient dense, you may end up leaving a lot of nutrients on the table and overall, over the course of a week, a month or so, uh, a month or multiple months, you can become malnourished. So you definitely wanna make sure that you are aware of the nutrients that you're consuming when you are consuming food during your eating periods versus your fasting periods. Because this is something that could easily slip under the radar because you're simply just not constantly eating all the time. Let's go ahead and move on to number three, dehydration. And dehydration can cause a lot of other sub side effects that can come from that. For example, headaches can come from dehydration. So if you ever did intermittent fasting and you found yourself having a few more headaches than normal, it's, it's probably because you may have been dehydrated. Now, here's the thing with dehydration. When you eat food on a normal clip, 
breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks in between. You are either eating foods that have water inside of them, uh, you know, apples, watermelons, foods with oils that there's food, foods contain little foods contain little doses of water. So you're constantly always replenishing yourself with some water. And also when people eat, they also either drink water or they drink a beverage, which whatever that beverage is, no matter what it is, it also contains water. So we're constantly inadvertently giving ourselves water when we eat with the normal diet system, the normal American diet. But when intermittent fasting, we sometimes forget to drink anything because we're not eating anything. So we're not getting the water doses that can come from food itself, but we're also not getting water from any beverage because one, we're not trying to consume anything that has calories in it. And two, we're not really consuming liquids when we're not eating because one of the freedoms of not eating is not having to worry about what to consume. So sometimes people just forget to even consume liquids, but you can't do that. You gotta make sure that you are thoroughly hydrated because of the fact that you are eating in a smaller time window throughout the day you are reducing your chances of consuming water so you have to hydrate you have to consciously hydrate yourself and be cognizant of the fact that you are probably not going to be consuming enough water if you don't consciously hydrate yourself trust me it will go a long way to avoiding other side effects that bounce off of dehydration number three sleep deprivation and that just happens because there are so many hormonal things that are triggered from the fact that you are doing intermittent fasting the fight or flight hormone norepinephrine and epinephrine those things are going to be shooting up and that's going to cause you to be more alert more awake and more active so you might actually find yourself to be very awake during the times where you should be sleeping but this is also something that your body has to get used to over time. You could also kind of finesse it in a way if you consume foods before you go to sleep, right before you go to sleep. Those things can help you sleep and be a little bit more comfortable, but you do have to kind of weather that storm a little bit until your body becomes acclimated to the new system. As long as your body finally gets comfort in whatever you're doing, the rest of it kind of dominoes in your favor. But if you are feeling that it is difficult to sleep, you are not alone. This is a very common side effect with those who do intermittent fasting. And number five, constipation. And this happens for a lot of different reasons. It could also be related to dehydration, but there are other factors that can cause constipation. For the fact that you are eating the food, the large amounts of foods that you're eating in such a small uh, time frame can cause constipation and the lack of certain nutrients can also cause constipation. You do want to make sure that you are balancing how you're eating. You're breaking your fast foods that are watery and easy to consume, easy to chew so that things like the lining in your stomach is not irritated by its lack of food and then its rapid food intake. So you just want to make sure that you are kind of going a little bit slow when you start the process of eating after a fast and also that you're eating things that have fiber to help with your gut and with digestion these things can go a long way being conscious of your nutrients can go a long way to